Hello. Welcome to Matters of Decorum. I am Scott Corum. This is what matters to me. I love to travel. Um, I have a wanderlust. My parents took me on a lot of trips when I was a kid. A lot. Um, from here in uh, Los Angeles up to Solvang and into Arizona. We, uh, we visited a lot of different places when we lived in the Midwest. Those trips were epic. Springfield, Illinois, the birthplace of Abraham Lincoln, uh, out to Monticello in Virginia, um, South Dakota, saw the, the, the Mount Rushmore. So many places, and I just got fond of it. Driving cross-country from St. Louis to Colorado to, to Denver, uh, my dad had to go to a conference, but he wanted to make a family trip out of it. And he had just gotten his brand new 1986 Berlinetta, and he did not want to miss a chance to drive a lot in that car. The 86 Berlinetta had no back seat. Well, not a functional one. There was kind of this shelf that they put padding on and pretended it was a back seat. It wasn't that there wasn't a back seat. Mom sewed this really, really nice body cushion that I could lay down across the shelf and pretend that it was back seat-ish. It wasn't anything like leg room. Um, it wasn't that when my dad took the panels off the T-tops, so we could feel the wind in his hair. The wind passing over the car created a vacuum on that back shelf, so there was no air to be had uh, while he was doing that. Uh, it was that we drove across Kansas in that car. I like driving trips. I love driving trips. I love watching stuff and seeing things. And that's the problem with Kansas because there's nothing. There's wheat. There's wheat and flat. Um, I, I had L. Ron Hubbard's Battlefield Earth to see me through Kansas and unfortunately I was a really fast reader and it didn't carry me all the way through. In fact, I got to that last part of Battlefield Earth where it should have ended like a hundred pages sooner and he just couldn't end the damn thing. And I'm slogging through this thing but every time I look up there is this endless wave of blurred wheat going past and nothing. If I was super lucky, I looked up when there was a silo or a barn or a cow or something, but no. Oh, Kansas. It wasn't until years later that I discovered I hated driving through Oklahoma more, but that's just me. Um, I think about all the road construction and how difficult it is to navigate the turnpike uh, in the dark. Again, just me. Denver was nice. Stayed at a nice resort where the business meeting was being held. Uh, my mom and I went on a canoe. I like to travel. Early on, um, late 70s, early 80s, uh, I was searching for what to do with my head while I traveled. Looking out the window was fine. I fell asleep a lot. Uh, my folks had spent a lot of time when I was a baby driving me around to help me get to sleep. And that has never really stopped being a thing. I fall asleep in cars stupid easy. Uh, which makes it difficult to drive on long trips. But you know, people who are my co-pilot know that they need to keep me caffeinated and the music needs to keep going. And every so often they need to poke me and everything's fine. Thank you, Devin. Um... The thing of it is that as I grew up and got better grip over my imagination, travel is when things blossomed. I spend too much time in this office. That's just kind of the way my life exists. Uh, here's where all of my tools are. Uh, all the software that I use, and my monitors, my really big one right here, um, my custom keyboard and the desk that I made for it, 
my camera and microphone rig. It's all right here. Anything that I need at any given point in time is right here as I need it. Uh, so as I come up with stuff in my head, I can express it. Having been trapped in my head for years as a kid, before I learned to write, and then before I learned to game, um, having access to my tools of expression is super important to me. It is also a trap. Because in here is a poor area to feed my brain. This is a great place to get stuff out of my brain and a terrible place to put stuff into it. That's travel. Like to people watch. Watching people gives me ideas for characters and styles and fashions that can occur in games um, and books. Uh, the mall. They, they, they recently redid Delamo Fashion Center and it is beautiful. I did a video on that a while ago. And it's a great place to go, and people watch and walk around and look at stuff. Um, the architecture and the, the environment that they've created is very conducive to thought. There's some of it still in flux. The far end of the mall is still being worked on. I think they're putting in a uh, uh, Dave and Buster's, which is going to be fun to have walking distance from me. Um, that's, that's good. That's like travel. That's, that's a little vacation. That, that I can walk to or drive to in two minutes and see new stuff, see fun stuff. Um, go shop for oil and vinegar and look at giant robot models. Yeah, there's a store at the mall now that sells the giant robot models. And I, I have more of those than I can actually do stuff with now. I haven't finished those. Wayne's going to beat me about it one of these days. But sometimes I need to get out. There's, there's a, a hundred places of interest around Los Angeles. Los Angeles is one of those concentrated uh, groupings of awesome stuff to go do and see that I have ever been to. Uh, and all of it's relatively compact. Um, Universal Studios and Disneyland and Knott's Berry Farm and Magic Mountain, if I want to go way out there and deal with all the... Well, Magic Mountain's maybe not the best thing. Um, I can head out to Redondo Beach Pier, Manhattan Beach Pier, Venice Pier, the Venice Boardwalk. Uh, there's marshlands and wetlands, and if I want to go over the Palos Verdes Mountains, there's the Friendship Bell and the Point Furman Lighthouse. Um, <clears throat> there's a there's an Esplanade that is just west of me. I'm five minutes from the ocean. I get in my car, I drive for five minutes. If I drive for six, I get wet. Um, and if I hit the ocean and make a left, uh, I'm driving along the Esplanade and there's this amazing view of the ocean, the Palos Verdes Mountains sticking out uh, into the sea and people and dogs and these amazing buildings of apartments and, and homes and you can park there and just get out have a have a little picnic right there on a bench on the sidewalk uh, which you know with my friend Mandy coming down pretty soon we're probably going to do that because it's a great place to just go and hang out I love the area that I live in um, and going to any or all of these places certainly puts stuff in my head. I can drive a couple of hours and I can be in Solvang. And if you've never heard of Solvang or been to Solvang, uh, you need to do a little research. It is not a big place. It is not a super fancy place. It's been relatively the same thing since I started going there in the 19th century. Since I was four, uh, my family's been taking me there. And I keep finding opportunities to go. Little Swedish Danish community, um, super touristy, hyper schlocky, windmills and, and and kitschy stores and a dozen wine tasting places because it's right on the edge of the Santa Ynez Valley where the, all the wineries come in and have a place where you can sample their stuff. And it's quiet and it's peaceful. 
and it's by some national parks and a really lovely waterfall when there's been rain. And sometimes it's not enough. I will travel with you at the drop of a hat. Uh, Friday, Devin and I are taking off up to Sacramento to go pick up Mandy. I've already got the half of the food for that thing planned because I can navigate by food because it's me. Um, and it's not a super easy drive. Splitting the drive with someone, now that Devin has her, her driver's license and we can split the driving duties, that's a really good thing. Um, I like Sacramento. I need to go a little bit more. And, you know, with Mandy up there, I've got a reason to. Uh, really good architecture and fun places to go and visit and see. I need to put stuff in my head. I need to process it in a way that is meaningful for me. And then come back to these four walls of this office and make it into things. This means I have the glorious advantage of going places and doing things, Williams, Arizona, and stuff. And I have the misfortune of blowing them all up in my head over and over again. I used to live in St. Louis. I've destroyed the St. Louis Arch in games a dozen times. Either turning it into an interventional rift, in rifts, or terrorists running around on top of it in magnetic shoes. Uh, I had a, a an image in my head of a... See, long before the Wachowski brothers made a Speed Racer movie, I had planned a Speed Racer movie that I never got to do anything with, where the car acrobatic team was doing stunts driving up the side of the St. Louis Arch, because that would have been awesome. My games tend towards the catastrophic. So do my stories. It's one of those things that uh, that is a hallmark of the games that I run. That is, you know, X happens and people do Y and Z is going on and then everything goes terribly wrong. Because no one rolls dice for everything to be just fine. Uh, no... No Dungeons and Dragons adventure runs. You go to this lovely place and nothing happens. Have fun. Stuff happens. And the more stuff you have to deal with, the more adversity you have to overcome, the more fun you have by the end of it. Yeah, you're running around and screaming for part of it, but that's what you're there for. I see a beautiful natural bridge. I enjoy the beauty of it and appreciate the geology that goes behind it. It's a magnificent wonder and the colors are, mag are great and I love the form and the animals and wildlife around it. It has this astonishing tapestry of, uh, of life and beauty. And then I see ninja cyborgs running across the top of it, lobbing grenades and trying to deal with it blowing up under them. What would you roll for that? That's, that, that's how my brain functions. That's what fills this thing. Is it any wonder I'm a little off sometimes? We've got a drive to Sacramento coming up. We're going up the 5 freeway, which uh, I've driven the 5 a lot in the past. Vic and I used to take the 5 up north uh, routinely to go visit our friend Joe. And, uh, um, there's parts of the five that are just lovely, and there are parts of the five that are a blasted post-apocalyptic wasteland that Vic constantly imagined being chased by Invid across. And Robotech soldiers eliminate them! And 
that's what I'm going to have in my head. It's going to be beautiful music playing. Well, my music list, which is partially beautiful and partially fight scene music and often both. And there's going to be stuff blowing up in here. And I'm going to get to Sacramento and I'm going to see places I really like. And there's going to be ninjas and giant spiders and giant ninja spiders and potentially giant ninja cyborg spiders. Ooh, I got to stat those up. Can you imagine with the webbing and the wall crawling and like driders kind of like, like with a cyber upper torso on a, no, the other way around. You have ninjas that have a spider cyborg body from the waist down. And grappling hooks and the spinnerets. And... I'm just thinking out loud for a second. Sorry, folks. I've had a lot of coffee today. I'm going to see my friend Mandy pick her and her daughter Zephyr up and bring them back down for a while. And here's the thing of it. And here's one of the joys of my life is that. I'm going to be seeing those explosions while I'm driving up, and I'm going to be able to talk them out. Devin keeps track of those things for me. I might even come back, and she'll have a page of notes for me to look at and remember, oh, you're going to blow this up here. Mandy, uh, <laughs> Mandy has a particular, what, what Mandy has is a particular set of skills, a set of skills that makes her a nightmare for people like most folks. Um, she can tell me exactly what compounds could be used to make those explosions happen. Uh, also, how to do the prosthetic effects if I wanted to film ninja cyborg spiders. Uh, uh, she might already have some of that in a notebook someplace. It's time to fill my head again. I'm doing classes digital art and computer modeling and that's going to lead to some very interesting stuff in the future I'm pretty sure because uh, it's way different than I thought it was and not as hard and at the same time really difficult go fig but I've been emptying my head out school projects trying to get supplements written doing videos uh, it's all a bit of a firing stuff out of my head as soon as it comes up. And that drains the neural resources. And that means I don't have any neural chemicals to fire off in the spots that ideas come out of. So, put on some nice clothes, get a good pair of shoes on, pack a bag get in a car, drive for eight hours, get a good night's sleep, eat some German food. If you're in Sacramento, uh, find a place called the Hofbrau. It looks like a little hole in the wall bar and it may have been at one point in time because it's kind of got an old Westy bar feel to it. Uh, but there's also this phenomenal German cafeteria right up front with this amazing food and, and and they it's not the same thing every night you know they've got their specials and oh my god the i'm i'm my mouth is trying to salivate even though it's not physically capable of it still uh, just thinking about their potato salad oh. have some good german food and then drive eight hours back listening to zephyr's kids music CDs and it's Zephyr so that's okay even for eight hours I'll do that do different things with my head and be around the people who make my head work better see things see different things I hope things change even on the five freeway things occasionally change different stores things open things close different signs different people complaining about water rights in big billboards often spray-painted not well um, travel stops that make no sense little old west towns little artificial old west towns uh, 
with an in and out and a 76 station and a store where you can buy jerky with bugs in it. And that is the fuel that my brain runs on. Okay, that and this. My brain runs on this too. Almost exclusively this and travel and weird stuff and explosions. I think that's most of it. So what does this mean for the future? More stuff. More travel. These videos should be coming out once a week through December and from that point on. They should be. I really hope they are. That was my plan for November, but you know, things happen. And maybe a few more things a little more often. 2018 is going to be super interesting. Well, thank you for following me along in this little ramble through my travels of the past and the near future. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, go ahead and give me a thumbs down. Feedback is feedback. If you have any questions or comments about my travels or would like to tell me about some of your own travels or your favorite places around Los Angeles or anywhere, leave me a comment. You'll love leaving me a comment. I'll love getting one. Uh, if you'd like to see these videos as soon as they come out, please subscribe. If you haven't subscribed yet, why not? These videos are awesome. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit the little notification bell too so that you get notified as soon as the videos come out. If you really dug the video and you'd like to help support me in some way, I invite you to hit me up on my Patreon page, www.patreon.com slash scottcorum, and consider donating something. Absolutely anything helps and allows me to make more videos, better videos, more often. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching. I'm Scott Corum, this is What Matters to Me, and I will see you next time on the next Matters of Decorum.